Hi, I'm Robin Worley, and welcome to Lenscraft. Today we'll be using some advanced Lightroom editing techniques whilst editing this photo of Thor's Well in Cape Perpetua. Now what I mean by advanced Lightroom editing techniques isn't that they're really difficult, it's that they take a little more refinement and effort, and that they aren't always obvious. And because they aren't always obvious, lots of photographers miss out on using them. The image I'm using to demonstrate this is a long exposure shot during the day using a 10 stop filter. Even though the exposure was around 5 seconds, I tried to time the shot so that the sea is running back down into the blowhole. The conditions weren't easy to work in safely, and I didn't manage to get the horizon level, so let's correct that first. I'm using the level tool for that in the crop overlay to click and drag along the horizon. Then when I release the mouse button, the image rotates to level the horizon. A useful feature that's often overlooked with the level tool is that you can use it with verticals as well, and not just horizontals. Now most photographers who edit RAW files in Lightroom use the default Adobe Color Profile without giving it a second thought. This is the profile Lightroom uses to assign how it controls the RAW file and converts that to colour and tone. For Lightroom Photos, I don't personally like to use the Adobe Color Profile. I'll therefore change it to one of the colour profiles for my camera. When I click on the icon showing the four rectangles, it opens the profile browser. The top section displays the different Adobe profiles, but then below this are the camera matching profiles. These are the camera manufacturer profiles, and differ depending on the camera make and model used. You probably won't see the same camera matching profiles as I do, because you're probably using a different camera. Despite this, it's worth checking the profiles for your camera in this section. For this image, I'll use the natural profile, because I know the colours are subdued after editing. The next thing to address is the colour balance, which is a strong blue colour cast caused by the long exposure filter I used. I'll correct that by manually adjusting the temp and tint sliders. I'm trying to create a colour balance where the white still looks slightly cool. Now let's look at the lens calibration panel. The camera I used to shoot this image was an Olympus EM5 which embeds the lens correction data into the RAW file. If I turn on the enable profile correction, you'll see that it says built in. At the bottom left of the panel, there's a small icon. Click this and you'll see the dialog displaying the lens profile used and saying that it's embedded in the RAW file. The other option I'm going to use is to remove chromatic aberration. Next, I want to improve the saturation of the image to achieve a stronger, but still natural colour. The way I'll achieve that is by using the calibration panel. Here we have saturation and hue sliders we can use to adjust the red, green and blue colour channels independently. We can then use these sliders to increase or reduce the saturation of one or more of the channels. It's a good idea to check the effect of each, but most of the time I find increasing the blues channel saturation works well. I'm going to increase this to plus 50 as a starting point, because I haven't made any other edits yet. I may need to return to it later to adjust it further though. The temptation at this point is to use the controls in the basic panel to recover the highlights and shadows. If we did this though, the image would look ok, but the adjustments would be applied globally to the image. This means we could easily end up applying changes to areas where we don't want them. A better strategy can sometimes be to start by making selective adjustments to some areas of the image. In this shot, we can see the exposure isn't balanced across the frame. The top of the frame is a little bit too light, whilst the bottom area is too dark. I can easily use the gradient filter to select the sky, and I'll also include some of the rocks. The first adjustment is to the highlights, which I'll reduce to around minus 70 to recover the highlights in the sea. I'll also reduce the exposure slightly by minus 0 0.20. I'll increase contrast to around 20. Finally, I'll add a small amount of dehaze with a setting of around 10. I like to use the dehaze slider to emphasise areas like the sky and water in an image where it's lacking detail because it's become too light. Notice the adjustment has also recovered the highlight areas in the water where it's draining into the blowhole. But my selection is causing a problem where the adjustment is affecting the rock and making it too dark. The way I'll fix this is using the luminance range mask to only select the light areas. If I turn on the show luminance mask, you can see the selected areas of the gradient with a red overlay. 
I can now use the range sliders to control which tones to include in the selection. The left slider sets the darkest tones to include. When I move this to the right, it excludes the darker tones. When I move it to the middle, you can see the selection now only includes the brighter tones in the image. Let's turn off the mask and I'll check the effect of the adjustments. We can now see plenty of detail in the water highlights, but the rocks aren't becoming too dark. This has left the image though looking a little bit flat, but we'll correct that later. Now I'll add a second gradient selection to lighten the area at the bottom of the frame. I'll draw in my selection as before and apply the adjustments. I'll start with an exposure increase of 0.4 to lighten the entire area. I then want to highlight the movement of the bubbles on the surface of the water further. A good trick I've found to help bring out highlights in areas like this is to use a clarity slider. If I add a small amount of clarity with a setting of say 10, it makes the highlights pop a little. I'll then increase the white slider to 20 to emphasise this further. With this adjustment I'm in danger of affecting some of the other water highlights around the edge of the blowhole. If I turn on the red overlay, you can see what's been selected by the gradient. This time, I'll use the gradient brush tool to refine the selection. I can use the erase brush to paint over the areas I want to remove from the selection. The two gradient adjustments have balanced the exposure across the frame, and I'm happy now to go to the basic panel adjustments. As the image is now looking a little dull and flat, I'm going to increase the exposure by around 0.3. I'll pull the highlight slider down to minus 40 though to protect the detail in the lighter areas. But I'll also increase the whites to plus 15 to help emphasise the very lightest tones. I'll then add a clarity of plus 10 to help bring back some sparkle to the image. Finally, I want to adjust the blacks because despite the rock being dark, there isn't a black point in the image. Before I make my adjustments though, I'll turn on the shadow clipping warning so that I can see any areas as they turn black. When I move the black slider far enough to the left, you'll see the areas turn blue to show where they're clipping. With the black slider set to minus 30, I can see some warnings appearing in the darkest areas, but not too much. Now the final area that I want to adjust is the centre of the blowhole. I want to bring out more shadow detail and highlight the draining water. To do this, I'll increase the shadow slider to 40 and the white slider to 20. I then want to emphasise some of the rock texture, which I can do with a texture setting of 15. Another trick that I sometimes use in situations like this is to set a small negative dehaze setting. In this example, minus 10 lightens the area further but without losing shadow detail. If I toggle the panel off and on, you can see the effect of these adjustments. But I can also see that they're spilling over into surrounding areas, so I want to remove them from those with the filter erase brush. This time I'll use a low flow setting that I'll need to use with multiple brush strokes, which will help to blend the adjustment. I'm happy now with my adjustments, so I'll return to the basic panel where I want to increase the vibrancy slightly. This will saturate some of the less saturated colours, but still produce a natural image. That's probably as far as I want to take the image adjustments in Lightroom, so let's compare the starting image with the finished image. I'm sure you'll agree that it's a substantial change. I'm also hoping some of the techniques I've used have given you new ideas for your own work. If you would like to learn more about photo editing and Lightroom, sign up for my monthly newsletter. I'll include a link in the YouTube video information. When you sign up, I'll also send you a 50% discount to my Lightroom editing course, which is already one of the best value courses available. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please share it with other Lightroom users. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft. I'll see you soon for another video.